my name is Trevor Weicker. I'm from Conestoga, Pennsylvania, and I hunted Zone 2 late season bull elk. I, I didn't even realize that the, uh, this was the first bull tag for late season. And honestly, I couldn't believe I pulled a tag at all, but it felt really special once it was explained to me that this was the first and really wanted to put in a great hunt to make it memorable. So when I was deciding whether I wanted to get a guide or not, I looked at the length of the season and realized with one week my wife was pregnant, I wasn't going to have time to scout like I thought I would. And with a once in a lifetime opportunity like this, it was it made sense to get a guide. My wife really pushed to make this special. And don't don't sell yourself short. So when I called around, that Hicks Run was my first choice because of their proximity to the zone. And I worked in Driftwood when I saw their address. It was kind of nostalgic. And it was it was Hicks Run's hunt to lose. And everyone was great. Everyone I spoke to was excited about the tag, which was different from the other outfitters I talked to. So when I came up scouting with my son. It was as exciting to me as the hunt itself because he's really interested in the outdoors. He's excited when his pappy shoots a, a buck. He's been asking me for a couple years now where, where my deer is and to be able to have him along for the ride leading up to the hunt meant as much as the hunt. The perspective watching Everett is he's, he's a rock star every day. He, when he's into something, he's really into it. and. I want to, to help bolster that in him. I don't want to, he's, he's very energetic and he's, he's very headstrong, but it's, it's what makes him great. So having, having him along, I, I knew he wanted to be a part of it, even though he doesn't quite understand what it, what it meant in the long run. So my guide setup was awesome. I started with Scott. Scott was my first point of contact. He got me set up with how the process was gonna go and then informed me about a month before the season that I was going to have two guides, the lead guide Brian was going to jump in and it worked out to be a great tandem. You know, Brian, Brian likes to really get in deep in the woods and Scott does as well, but Brian, he likes to dig in and that's why I was here to, to really dig in. And we were chasing elk pretty hard all over zone two and Scott swooped in anytime we needed land access. I, we needed four or five different accesses and only got one now. And Scott, Scott put in a lot of legwork getting us the access to, that ended up getting us the bull. And my guides were great. It was a, it was a total team effort because the bull I have wouldn't be on the ground without both guides. So putting in the miles was something I was looking forward to. I loved being in the woods and I made it clear from the jump that I, I wanted to hunt elk. I didn't want to kill elk. So I, I expected the mileage. I uh, was glad that I wasn't pushed to to do a hunt that was different than the hunt I wanted. Had we not put in the mileage, we wouldn't have found the elk we found anyway. They just, from what my guides tell me, they were moving so much differently this year than in previous years. We'd find them on one hill and the next day they'd be two hills over, which is how we ended up with the bull I got. Hicks runs a great outfitter. They take care of you from the jump. They were very, very willing to accommodate any needs. And originally, I was expecting to have my family here with me they were going to be well received if, if they had come up. We, luckily we were able to do something different, but the food was great, the experience is great, the camaraderie is, it, it's like a family. You know, when you walk in for breakfast and for dinner, everyone's talking, everyone's excited, everyone's game planning for the next day. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't feel like what, I've worked with a, a guide service before for Whitetail, and it was a totally different experience. And, they were in to get you into the woods and then they were going to fix run. It was, it's like a family. So the day of the hunt, the day of the kill, we, we started out in the morning looking for two big bulls we had seen one time accessing a field. Started there in the morning, did some glassing, weren't, weren't seeing anything but it was pretty windy. So we went to check some other spots before we went back into the woods and in our travels we saw five bulls on a hill that we had seen previously on another that we'd been tracking through this uh, valley between the mountains. So it was on private land. We were a little concerned we wouldn't get access. Uh, Brian and I kept moving. We were going to get back in the woods and Scott got to work getting us, getting us access. And there were two properties there. We ended up getting access to both. Walking, walking some of the logging roads, 
looking at other access points and on our trip through we saw one up on the hill. Brian told us not don't look up, just keep moving. And we moved out, made a plan to walk down the road, cross a field, get to the top of the mountain and work our way down in. So the three of us moved up, the leaves were pretty crunchy. Um, Brian and Scott decided one of them should stay back. Scott stayed back, Brian and I tiptoed through the leaves, went pretty high on the hill, got a, got a look down, decided we were a little high, were able to get on a logging road and be quiet, and about halfway down that road, Brian spotted antlers sticking up through the weeds down in some pine trees, and we didn't really have a, a good shoot to, to walk down in, so we ended up crab crawling about 100 yards down, down this logging road, and first we thought there were only two two scrub bulls in there we were going to figure out how to move out and then uh, the one I ended up shooting turned his head about 40 50 yards in front of us and we we kind of had to lock in place he got up one time didn't quite have a shot but he was just fidgeting and laid back down ended up he was going to give me a I had a tight little window but he was going to give me a perfect shot on him when he stood up and we got set up just stayed there in his bedroom for hour, hour and a half. He finally stood up. I had about two seconds to take a shot. One shot, he went about 20 yards and it was down. But it was it was crazy sitting there. He had no idea we were there. Just watching him, chewing his cud, looking around. He was he was alert. Any little noise he would uh, he'd spin his head around. At one point my guide Brian let out this quiet quiet little burp and he sh shot his head right looked up our way, couldn't see us through the weeds, but didn't like that there was a sound around him that he couldn't pinpoint. And uh, yeah, it, was, it was crazy, I never thought we'd get that close. I thought we'd bust them, but, or they'd bust us. But that was, that was the way I wanted to kill a bull. And really hunt in, work hard for it, and, and it paid off again. <laughs> Seeing him for the first time up close was, it felt, just this culmination point. It was, you know, I, I do have reverence for these animals and I, I wanted him to go peacefully and I'm, I'm glad he did. Uh, I'm also glad I was there there for it to end. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't wait for him. We, once he was down and the other bulls took off, we, we moved up on him quick just to make sure he was good and he was, you know, he only had a minute or two left when we walked up to him and I was glad I got to be there for that. I feel it's important. You, you see what you do, and it just—it was the icing on the cake. It was, it was perfect. And he was a lot nicer when I got to him than I than I had realized. I, I was happy with him just for the hard work we put in to get to him. But when I got up close, he was—he's the kind of bull I was looking for. Having my family there when, when we got the bull out before we started processing it was amazing. They've been excited for me and with me all leading up to this hunt. Uh, I made it a point to, to not bring anyone in the woods with me. I, I wanted this to, I don't get many chances to hunt hard, but I definitely missed them and I was happy they were able to come celebrate with me, with us. Everyone at Hicks Run received them with you know, care and love. I, it, it was like they had been there a hundred times. It's like they were part of the family. Yeah. My family's very important to me and it was I, it was important to me they were there to celebrate with me and I, I couldn't have been happier with the reception. I only expected to have Everett there. My youngest son was able to come, my wife came up, her parents. Uh, unfortunately my dad had to leave it the day before I killed it. I'm, I'm, sure, he, I'm sure he's uh, upset about that but it was just amazing. It was amazing to have him there. Uh, the advice I would give to future hunters when they get a tag and are deciding on a guide service, uh, don't get me wrong, if, you're, if they're from the area, they know the area, they know how to get deep, maybe, maybe you could pull it off on your own. Extraction and processing is a, as much a part of the process as the hunt. And having, having Hicks run there, that, that made probably the hardest part of the hunt the easiest part for me. We were able to get it out easily. We skinned it split it right right at their their shed behind the lodge uh, that would have been a, a whole a whole other issue if I were hunting by myself uh, I would absolutely recommend getting a guide if you don't 
if you don't know the area, you don't have the time to put in, you don't know how the elk move, that you're really, you're, you're not giving yourself the best opportunity. These guys are in the woods up here year round, specifically Hicks Run, the, the owners live here. You know, they, most of the guides are up here probably every month of the year, walk and they know how the elk move. I, I would highly recommend anyone with a tag go with a guide.